I've been asked many times if you can print flexible filament on a CR10 Mini or even an Ender 3. Well you can and I'll show you how on today's Filament Friday. Filament Friday is brought to you every week by the generous donations of these Patreon supporters. I've tried various flexible filaments, but NinjaFlex is one everyone recommends. It's a TPU with an 85A shore hardness, so it's truly flexible. And some say it prints really great, but you need the right printer. Well, I wanted to try it on my CR10 Mini. I found this flexible octopus by user Diabase Engineer on Thingiverse. It's kind of a famous flexible print. I brought it into Simplify 3D and I made a new profile. It says PLA here, but it's TPU. I'm going to print fast or 0.3 layer height. And I remove retraction from my extruder. I shut that off. So 0.3 layer height, three top and bottom layers, and six perimeter shells. And I did that because I'm going to print with an infill of 0%. And for support, don't need that, but temperature, I was 20 degrees on the bed and 230 degrees for the filament, which is a recommendation I read online. I did have my fan enabled, but speeds I slowed down to 10 millimeters per second. So this is actually a very, very slow print. I sliced it and it said it would take 3 hours and 28 minutes. So I started it out on my CR10 Mini and right away I got this. So I refed the filament in again and it got worse. So this is why people say you can't print on a CR10. But I found this flexible filament extruder upgrade on Thingiverse by user Josh VV. So I downloaded that and printed it on my CR10 Mini using Filament Friday Filament Blue. Came out good. Then I cut a small piece of Capricorn tubing, 15 millimeters, and I purposely cut it without the tool. I wanted it flat. Then I pushed it into the new print until it bottomed out and I put it so the flat part was parallel to the base. So you can see here. Now I needed to trim this to a point that followed this same curve so this would fit between the gear and the idler wheel. So I cut one side with the side cutters and that came off really smooth. Now I needed to cut the other side. And once I did that, it kind of looks like a snake poking through. But it looked good and I think this will fit perfectly between the idler and the gear. So then I grabbed some PLA filament and I pushed it through to get rid of any nerds or anything that will block the filament from going through in either direction. So this seemed to work really well and I could feel it separating the the two little triangles that were hanging out. Now I need to install this on the extruder. So the first step was to remove the idler arm. This one screw on the top which goes into the motor is what holds it in place. I remove that plus the spring and set that aside. The Bowden tube unscrews from the extruder base and this is what goes to the hot end so I just set that aside. And then there's three screws that hold the extruder base to the motor. Now these also hold the motor to a metal bracket so I needed to hold the motor while I did this because I didn't want the motor to drop and possibly fall on the glass bed and crack it. So I loosened all three then I could lift it off and then bring in the new one that we just made and place it on top. I lined everything up and then I used the same screws from the old extruder base on this one. Make sure you put the flat one in this front corner because the idler arm will go over that. The back two are basically the same screw. So I put them all in and then I went around and tightened them all to make sure I had the motor tight and that looked really good. So now I checked it out and you could see where it's going to fit between the gear and the idler. This is looking really good. So I got the idler arm and the spring, put that in place. I'm going to have to squeeze this just a little bit to get the screw to line up. So this took a little bit of effort. But once I got that lined up, I tightened everything and the idler arm seemed to be working fine. And when I squeezed it, I could see that it wasn't being blocked by that little PTFE tube. And then I fed in some flexible filament, some Ninja Flex, and I could see that it was grabbing against the gear. So that length was perfect. So I pushed a little bit more out and then put the Bowden tube back in place. And there's no threads on this thing, but it's screwed perfectly into that plastic. I manually pushed Ninja Flex into the Bowden tube until it bottomed out on the hot end, clipped it in place on the guide, and then I preheated it to 225 degrees at the hot end. I went to the prepare menu, move axis, extruder, one millimeter, 
and then I set it to extrude 20 millimeters or 19 millimeters of filament. And it started to ooze out. And I never got this far before. There's still black filament from a previous print in this thing. So I just let it keep pushing it out and it seemed to be working fine. I wasn't seeing it bind up or anything. It was pushing out the old filament until I got white. And once I got white, I knew I was ready to print the octopus. Here's the first layer going down and I could tell right away this was flowing beautifully. There was no gaps. It was being placed down on the bed perfectly. And I just kept watching it. There was no binding at the extruder. This is a time lapse of it printing the octopus. I did get some stringing on that first couple layers, but then it was printing perfectly. And when it was done, it popped right off the bed and this thing looked like a good print. Now I was worried about the layers maybe not sticking together good, but it that was not a problem. This thing was just what I wanted. Perfectly flexible. I could squeeze the head. Nothing was breaking apart. The bottom of it looked nice and smooth off the glass bed. I just have to trim off that stringing. I can probably improve that with some uh, extruder settings. This sparkly red flexible filament from Jim Carter. It's a sample. It's been sitting around here so I tried it and it printed great. So then I made the same modification to my Ender 3, used the Ninja Flex, and it worked perfectly. So out of the box, the CR10 Mini or Ender 3 can't print flexible filament, but this small modification, you're all set. So if you like this, maybe check out some of the other videos that are popping up. If you want to help support the channel, a dollar a month to Patreon is appreciated. And if nothing else, click on that Chep logo and subscribe. That's it. I'll see you next time right here at Filament Friday.